Hi guys, I have another example of one of my power apps I'd like to share with you. And this is a timesheet and invoicing application. So let me explain the scenario in which a client came to me and asked for this application to be written. Let's move over to our entity relationship diagram or the database schema that is used for this app in Dataverse. Now here you'll see a simplified ERD or entity relationship diagram or database schema. I'm not showing all the fields in this schema. It just wouldn't easily fit on the screen all at once here, okay? But you can imagine for an employee table, I'm gonna hover my cursor over the employee table. Uh, an employee table, of course, is going to hold things like first and last name. And so you can imagine that, that type of information. For a database table, that would hold person type of information. Also, like recruiter, a recruiter is a person as well. So a lot of the data, like employee data, recruiter data, vendor data, that type of stuff is actually entered directly into the Dataverse database with model-driven screens that allow them to insert, update, delete, and maintain that data like a back office type of application. I was able to save my client money by allowing them to manage that data through model-driven screens. Now the Canvas application that I built for this client manages all the timesheets for all their employees. And then once that data is entered, they're able to submit invoices to their vendors. So let me show you those screens now. Now what you see here is a home screen or simply a splash screen. When they see this screen, they know that they're in the right application. I'm gonna go over and open up the menu. And you see here we have a time sheet hour entry. And we're gonna click on that item. So here at the top of the screen, we could actually select a day out of any week that we want to select. Okay, so I could click on the 15th for the next week, click OK, and it's gonna open up that week. You can see that at the column headings at the top, you've got Sunday through Saturday with the dates associated here. Alternatively, you could click on these arrows a week back or a week forward. I'm gonna click on two weeks in the past and I'm gonna find this guy named uh, Darren and I'm gonna enter some hours for this week. Now. Something that I should point out here, this particular client has someone in the office that enters all of the hours for all of their employees, and those employees email that person, that office manager. Those employees provide all the hours they worked for that week, along with an attachment of that email with a screenshot showing those hours in whatever system they use to track their hours, okay? I actually suggest to the client that each of these employees enter their hours directly into this Power App, but they wanted one staff member to validate everything before it's actually entered into the system. So if they were to go in here and start entering some hours for this week, I'll go and hit eight. Okay, now you notice as I enter the number eight, it gives me a spot to actually upload the employees a screenshot of their hours they took from whatever system they manage their hours in. Okay, but we could go through here, let's say on Tuesday, now you saw the, the spinner take a hold there. It was actually creating a, what's called a work week. If I go back over to the entity relationship diagram, in order to have everything work properly here, we have timesheets, but we also have timesheet weeks. Okay, so during that brief moment, it checks to see if there's actually a week record out there. And if it's not there, it actually creates it because we actually need to start populating a collection here within Power Apps in memory and start putting some data in there. Okay, once they're done entering everything on this screen for this particular week for multiple employees or one employee, they would simply click on the save changes, it would save all the data, in that collection into the Dataverse database. Let's say on Tuesday, they worked five hours. Wednesday, they worked seven. Then the rest of the week, they entered eight for each day. So this guy worked 36 hours. Now, more could be entered here for other employees. Let's say they're just processing one at a time within a given week. Now you probably notice these controls at the top of the screen that allow you to move back and forth in the weeks. They're dimmed out because we have a collection for the current week that we know we need to save before we go on to a different week because 
when we change weeks, it reinitializes some in-memory collections that are being used on this screen. Okay, so from here, they would click Save Changes. Hey, if you're getting anything helpful out of this, a comment or even a like really helps the channel and that's people like you know this is good content. Much appreciated. Now remember where there was a screenshot and an email that this person entering the data received? Well, they could go here and click on Upload Now. They would get a little pop-up screen and they can click on this to actually go find that on their hard drive. They would select it and then they would click Submit Image. Notice after a screenshot has been uploaded into this timesheet week, instead of that button being there, we've got a paperclip indicating there's an attachment. If I click on that, it brings that image back up so they can view it. There's a little view icon that I put in there. If they click on that icon, it's gonna show the full screen. All right, so now that we have time entered, for a particular employee within a week. Let's say we want to submit an invoice. So I'm gonna open up the menu and show you all the menu items here. Now, the application administration and the developer screen, uh, that's not gonna be seen by most users. They're just gonna see the home screen, the timesheet, our entry, and also the invoice uh, listing screen. So if we go to the invoice listing screen, we'll notice that these are all the invoices that have been submitted thus far. And then right now I'm just gonna click on add new to add a new invoice. Here we go. I notice for this employee, for this position, these are the hours that were submitted. If I go find the employee that we were just working with, I'll select him. Okay, so we see we just entered some hours here and they appear here. We also have eight hours from another week it has not been invoiced yet. So this screen actually pulls in data from a lot of different tables. I think it might be best to go back to our entity relationship diagram and go over some of that data that's being pulled in. Okay, so on that invoicing screen, we're creating a new invoice, right? So do you see this invoice table up here? So it has relationships with uh, some of these other tables here. The position table is actually uh, hub of a lot of these other database tables. Okay, so we do have a timesheet that's attached to a particular employee that is attached to a timesheet week. Now that is attached to a position. Now position, we have vendors that we need to invoice. We have employees that have done work for a vendor, but we have a position that has been defined for that employee working for that vendor. Then there are rates for that employee working for that vendor, and then those rates can change. Now, if you see over here, we have a position pay rate table that has a one-to-many relationship with the position. Maybe that position is open for years and the rate goes up over time. Okay, well, that needs to be tracked. But let's say we have that very same employee that maybe just worked 20 hours for that one vendor. Well, what happens when we have that same employee that needs to work another 20 hours for a completely different vendor. Well, there would be another position row for that combination, and it would have different data between that employee and that vendor. And then that position has a lot of other details, like when it starts and when it ends, the invoice cycle, the payment cycle, payment terms. We also have a recruiter that recruits an employee for a particular vendor. All that has to be associated and pulled in into this position table, okay? So there's a lot of data from different tables being pulled in within this screen. So as you can see here, we have the billing cycle monthly, net terms, net 45. It's pulling things in like a customer ID. Now, as we go in to these uninvoiced hours, let's say the, the month actually cuts off in the middle of the week and we're trying to create an invoice for the previous month. Well. We might have something like we might select this one and all the way up until, let's say, Tuesday. And this could be a scenario where the Wednesday is the first of the next month. So we would only want to invoice on the hours that we go in and select here. OK, and you notice that it adds up or sums all the ones that were selected. It goes to that position table. It goes to get the rate for that position for that employee working for that vendor. And of course, the total on the right side multiplies these values. At the very bottom, we have the total due, which sums those values. 
We have all the hours summed here as well. We could also add some invoice notes. You could either type in here or I've added a little icon they can click on and they've got a little bit more space to type. I'm gonna click save. There you go and you can see it right there. Now after the staff member has finalized all these details and it's ready to be sent off to the vendor so they can pay it, all they have to do is click on this button, submit invoice. And what this is going to do is create an invoice document and email it to that vendor. Now, I have some exciting news, which is I still have yet to implement one of the features that's needed for this application to actually generate those invoice files. And I'm going to do that on this channel with you guys and show you exactly how I'm going to do that. Guys, for some reason, YouTube thinks you're going to like this video next. Let's see if they're right. Or you can select this playlist, which I've selected for you based on the content you're currently watching. Guys, got to hurry. Click one of them. Otherwise, YouTube's going to autoplay some other video, which you probably don't want. Thanks. <laughs>